everybody, and welcome to Bird Fans Forever. This is episode 10. Uh, our guest today is going to be Matt Taphorn. Uh, I played with him from 1985 to 1988. He actually played on the 84-85 NCAA team, went to the NIT twice, uh, both in his junior and senior year. So it is an honor and a privilege to talk to him today. Um, but before we talk to Matt, and we are on YouTube, so please go out and subscribe and hit the like button. Also, on any one of your favorite podcast listeners, whether that's Apple, Spotify, or Google, and a whole host of others. Um, if you want to find other podcast listeners and where we're at, hit, go to www.birdfansforever. And with that, we are going to go and talk to Matt Taphorn. Back and so this is Bird Fans Forever podcast, and I'm here with my teammate Matt Tapward. Played from 1984 to 1988, uh, he was also my host my senior year in high school at Illinois State. Um, so welcome, Matt. Thank you for being on. Thanks for having me on. I'm uh, excited to talk to you guys and relive some of the past memories. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. So we normally start with how did you get the ISU? So I know you played a peak in. Let's hear it. Right. No, I mean, it was a, you know, a situation where coming out of Pekin, I was, you know, not heavily recruited, but, um, you know, one of my, my good friends when I uh, was in school, who was at Illinois State, uh, Steve Ensley, I uh, talked to Pat Cunningham, who was the assistant coach at ISU, and said, hey, you need to go take a look at this guy over at Pekin. And so, you know, Coach Cunningham came over, took a look at me, and, and then uh, had Donawald come over. And I, and I actually played, you know, a lot that summer before my senior year in some different uh, different camps. Our team went down to a camp in Louisville, and, and we finished second as a team uh, in the entire camp. And then, you know, I was actually the runner-up MVP in that camp. And the MVP was Herb Crook. I don't know if you remember Herb Crook that played at Louisville uh, back in the day. But uh, that's where I started to really get a lot of interest. And Jim Platt was the other assistant coach at ISU at the time. He was at that camp and contacted me shortly after and, and asked me if I had an interest in ISU. So that kind of started the ball rolling, and, and I had a couple visits to campus. And then Coach Donwald actually came over to a practice one time at Pekin. It was just an open gym. And... Uh, <laughs> funny situation I was bringing the ball down the floor and a junior guard tried to take the ball from me and he got the ball but I immediately grabbed him and threw it down and Donna <laughs> <out of that. laughs> that was always a story that coach always told and, and one of the reasons why I ended up there but you know I really liked the style that ISU played at the time it, it really mirrored what, the, what I did in high school you know strong man-to-man -man defense motion offense um, really a team game. There wasn't any individual play that uh, stood out above anybody else. And, of course, they were, you know, very successful at the time, just coming off back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments, uh, or, or the, the second year of that NCAA tournament was my senior year in high school. So it was a very successful program and one that I thought was on the rise. So uh, it was an easy decision for me. Um, you know, probably one of the other schools that was uh, second on the list was Kansas State. Uh, that was uh, school wow. both, both my parents went to. I was actually born in Manhattan, Kansas, when my parents were in college. Uh, so that was another one that was high on my list. And oddly enough, uh, they offered me a scholarship after I had already committed to ISU. And uh, unfortunately, I, I had to tell them no because I, I wanted to, to you know, stick with my commitment. But, uh, yeah, so that's where it all started and, and uh, had a, you know, successful – career at, at Beacon, and we were actually number one in state for a short period of time my senior year. I had the opportunity to play with my brother for a little while uh, while he was there. He was a year, year younger than me, and he, oddly enough, he went on to play at Wisconsin Green Bay for Dick Bennett and, uh, you know, had, had a very successful career there as well. Uh, I always thought he should have been uh, at ISU with me. Uh, and and he, he would have been part of John's class uh, with, I think, eight guys we brought in that year, uh, only two of which I think finished their careers. And uh, yep. I certainly thought my brother could have, uh, you know, finished his career at Illinois State as well. But that's neither here nor there. And, and you know, he had a great career where he ended up and, and has a lot of great memories there. And 
and certainly I did as well. So, so growing up in Central Illinois, you had to be have some Bradley fans around you. So were they trying to like convince you to go to Bradley, or, and, and was there any discussions with them at all? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of Bradley fans in the area, uh, certainly in Pekin, but. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they contacted me, but I just I didn't have a lot of interest in that program. I, I wasn't a big fan of Dick Versace. I watched their team occasionally on TV. I mean, they had some great teams back then, too. You know, they had, yep. um, you know, Mitchell J.J. Anderson and Donald Reese and David Thirdkill, and, you know, that, that team went, that went to the NIT and won in the early 80s was one of the best teams ever in the, at Bradley. And uh, they had a lot of success, but it just wasn't my style of play, and uh, you know, it didn't didn't really match what I was looking for. So when you get on campus, and uh, so we'll tell people here, like you and I had a lot of classes together, right? We're both accounting majors and stuff like that. So we like we like to highlight uh, how smart our guests are and stuff <laughs> like that. So you know, John Jones, he, you know. He told everybody he had a 3.6 grade point average. You don't have to tell people your grade point average. We'll just let them know that, you know, you started out in the honors program, right? I did. And uh, counting major, one of the more, you know, John Jones said that the counting classes were the tough ones, right? And, and so it's some of the tougher classes there. So talk, talk about that, you know, being part of, you know, freshman year, getting acclimated to, to uh, um, basketball and, and the academics that go with it, and you you were you did a great job. Your roommate Jeff was had great uh, great point average too. So talk about that and, and and how you got that balance. Sure. No, it's uh, you know it was a, a great opportunity to come into uh, the honors program and and get you know preferential classes and and uh, get some challenging um, you know teachers and and I didn't stay in the honors program very long, but. Um, you know, I did graduate with an accounting degree, so, you know, it was a pretty rigorous program and especially trying to play basketball at the same time. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, my roommate was Jeff Harris, who, by the way, is today's his uh, 57th birthday. <laughs> um, so, you know, he was very studious as well. He, he graduated with a chemistry uh, degree, went on to med school at uh, Indiana University and is today a uh, medical. Uh, he's a surgeon in uh, knee and hip replacements, so uh, he's done very well for himself. But you know that was a benefit for me of having somebody who was that committed to academics as well. And and first coming in, you know, we we had a lot of help uh, with study halls and and tutors and that kind of thing. But after the first semester, I think Jeff and I were cleared from that just because we had done so well in class that we got to kind of do our own thing. Yeah, and then I, I saw something uh, on, on our YouTube site. There, there was a thing with you. You were the special guest on the Bob Donald, and they alluded to I don't know if you remember this because it's only 30-something years ago, this interview. But <laughs> apparently, you and Jeff had a little competition going uh, on, on your grade point average. Yeah, yeah. I think that lasted one semester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeff was yeah. at, at, at another level. He, you know... One of the smartest guys I've ever met, and uh, very committed. Studied a lot as he needed to, you know, in his his major, and, and you know, certainly in the chemistry program, they had a lot of labs that he had to go to, so extra time that he spent, uh, you know, going back and forth with, you know, basketball and everything else uh, in addition to that. So uh, he was probably much more committed than I was, and you know, I, I tried to, I tended to socialize a little bit more than he did. And, uh, you know, after we both graduated, I, I tried to get him out to some more social activities and <laughs> broaden his horizons a little bit. Now, let's talk about, uh, you're, you're on ISU now, we'll talk, start talking about more basketball. And uh, so that freshman year, it was a pretty special year. You, you were with uh, a group of seniors, probably one of the, uh, one of the most successful classes ever. Right. And it, it ends in, you know, an at-large bird, or sorry, at-large bid. To the NCAA. You want to talk about that season? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, coming into that year, the four seniors we had were Lou Stefanovich, Ricky Johnson, Brad Duncan, Michael McKinney. This this would end up being three straight years for them participating in an NCAA tournament. But uh, great leaders, 
And one of the first memories I have of those those seniors was in a practice session. And I think it was even when Rick Lamb and Hank Cornley were coming back and, and practicing against us. But I was down the floor one time and, and Lou was posted up on the block demanding the ball and I didn't throw it to him. On the way down the floor, he grabbed me by the shirt and in no uncertain terms did he say, when I'm open, you throw me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the first introductions to uh, senior leadership on that team. But, no, I think, you know, that group certainly, uh, you know, led us to a, a, a great season. Uh, the, the competition in the Valley was unbelievable. Tulsa was phenomenal. Wichita State with Xavier McDaniel was, uh, you know, incredible. Bradley was still very good then. Um, and, and so the competition was, was fierce. Uh, we played Tonight Benjamin Creighton. Sorry. Oh, yeah, but Tonight only... Benjamin Cajun. Yeah. I mean, Harris was yeah. on Tulsa. Yeah. They had some, uh, and even somebody like Sherman Williams, you know, John Sherman Williams. At oh Michigan yeah. State. I mean, we had some just incredible talent in the Valley at that time and some, some really great coaches and, uh, very fiery coaches. So it was a, it was a great year. Um, you know, we even won a couple of holiday tournaments, uh, that year. Uh, one in, in Providence, uh, Rhode Island. Uh, that was when uh, Reggie Lewis uh, was playing for Providence College, you know, went on to play for the Celtics and and ended up passing away prematurely. But uh, the other one was, I believe, out in San Diego when we played in a tournament out there. So it might have been University of Pacific, actually. We played San Diego in that tournament. But, yeah, just, you know, great season, as you mentioned, ended in the NCAA tournament. But what's interesting to know is that was the first year that the tournament expanded to 64 teams. And we actually finished third in the Valley behind Tulsa and Wichita. And, and that was when the tournament was played at home and home sites. So the first game of that tournament, we played Indiana State at home, who had yeah. John Sherman Williams. We lost that game, a first round game against a lower seeded team. And we still got in the tournament. So we, we, I think we were either an eight or a nine seed. I can't remember which one, one of the two. We played USC in the first round at Oral Roberts uh, University in Tulsa, which, you know, if you've been there, all the buildings there are gold-plated. It's just amazing. And what I do remember about that game is in uh, warm-ups, the cheerleaders for USC were just amazing I kept, you know, I kept uh, nudging Harris. I said, "Hey, look at that one! Look at this one!" And uh, so, yeah, it was it was a unique experience. But I, I got in in that game. Uh, we won, I think, by seven or eleven. I can't remember which. And then uh, the reward for that was we got to play Oklahoma in the next round. They were a number one seed, so they had Wayman Tisdale, and um, I'm trying to think of some of the other guys that they had. Uh, Chew Kennedy was another guy they had, McAllister, uh, Bowie. I mean, they were all future NBA players. Uh, but Tisdale, obviously, was the All-American. And in the game against us, he went 13 for 16 from the field. I think he had 29 wow. points for the game. And we only lost to him by seven points. And I actually scored a basket in that game. So I had two points in my career in the NCAA tournament game. So uh, not something that everyone else can can say. But... Uh, again, just a, a great experience coming home off of that, um, you know, NCAA run. The, the fans were incredible, and they, they welcomed us back. Uh, so it was a real memorable period. So then as we head into the next year, you know, we lose four seniors, so it's kind of starting over. William Anderson was our only senior the next year, and uh, that was the year that we brought in uh, John and his fellow <laughs> classmates. So I think there were eight in that class. There was. Cool. Yep. that we originally brought in. And uh, so it was a lot of new faces, uh, everyone trying to, to figure out how they fit in. Um, I, I played a lot that year as a sophomore, got hurt a couple times, just sprained ankles here and there. But that year we struggled. We finished 15 and 14. But that was the same year Bradley finished uh, 32 and 3. And they were actually 31 and 1, I believe, uh, heading into the Missouri Valley Tournament. And we played them in the second round. Again, we were a 500 team. We beat Wichita in the first round. We played Bradley in the second round. And they had, they had to have a, a 
shot at the buzzer to beat us. So to Hawkins beat us. Yep. laid in a layup at the buzzer. And what frustrated me about that game was I had guarded him the entire game, and he had like seven points, one of the lowest <laughs> scoring games of his career. In the last possession, Donald put Cliff Peterson on him to guard him because he thought he needed somebody bigger on him. Well, he, you know, Hawkins went right by Cliff and straight to the basket and scored. So yep, yep. lost to him that game. The other game during that same season – um, we lost to Bradley at their place by four in overtime. And that was, a, again, a last-second uh, regulation shot by Jim Les to send that game into overtime. Oh, wow. Yep, yep. And then the game at our place, I think we lost to them by seven. So a team yeah. who finished 32-3, and three, we lost to, you know, by a combined 13 points in three games, even though we were a 15-14 and 14 team. So a lot of lessons learned on that, that year's team. It gave – you know, my class of Jeff Harris, myself, Tony Hollifield, Cliff Peterson, a lot of opportunity to play. Um, the class ahead of us was Bill Braxick and Derek Sanders. Those were the only two juniors on the team. And, uh, you know, they were the leaders going into the next year. Well, not shortly after the season started, Braxick decides to leave the team. And he transfers to Illinois Wesleyan and leads them yep. on to a – uh, national finals. I think they finished second in the finals that year. Um, so now we're down to one senior, Derek Sanders again. And, you know, my class of four juniors, John's class may have, we lost, we might have lost a couple. We lost a lot. Maybe. It was just Todd Starks and I and Sonny Roberts at that point. The only, um, only three of the eight were yep. left. Yeah. Kratz had left. Oh, Sean Morris was still there, but he was a walk on, right? right? But. Yep. So Kratz had Kratz, left, Teagle, Jay Teagle Crane. left, DeCrane yeah. had gone. Yeah. So, again, lost a lot. But then we had a really strong incoming freshman class that year. Gerard Coleman, Ricky Jackson, Randy Blair, uh, they contributed a lot. Sam Some Scarich. that year, that year, but certainly more the next year. So Derek was our leader that, that year. And, uh, you know, a difficult kind of up and down season. I can remember one game we played at Creighton. And I think we won the game 35 to 32. And Derek scored 26 of our 35 points. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine that? 35 to 32. And this was during a shot clock era. So just yeah. both teams couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. And in the same week, we beat, I think it was West Texas State, maybe 42 to 32. So in the same At week, home. we held yes, yeah, we held two teams, one to thirty points, and the other to thirty-two points. So, you know, at least we could play defense if we could score. So again, yeah, but that was pretty, ty- Matt. That was pretty typical of a Donawall team. Oh, I mean, for sure. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't even play. have a ball on the court for the first week of practice, right? <laughs> a coach would have a ball. We didn't. We didn't do much shooting. I mean, it was all footwork v cuts yeah foot, i mean it was all fundamentals so yeah yeah so that that led us into the you know season uh you know ending tournaments and you know again i think in the missouri valley tournament we lost early on in the process that was again when when games were home and home so we ended up getting an nit bid that year and uh beat akron at home and uh you know, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Uh, um, Cleveland, Cleveland State. State. Yeah, uh, Cleveland State. Up, uh, oh, gosh, who, who am I thinking of that was the coach of Akron at the time? He's at West West Virginia now. Oh, uh, um, yeah, he was at Kansas State. Yeah, Perhaps. yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> Since none of us can remember. We're getting old. It, oh. yeah, it, it, <laughs> hey, Matt. And Bob Post, Cincinnati. Oh, Bob Huggins. Bob Huggins, yeah. Huggins. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was the coach at Akron. That was one of his, his first jobs. So we beat him at home. Um, we went to Cleveland State after Cleveland that. State. Cleveland yep. State hadn't lost a game at home all season, and they played in this old dusty gym in, in <sighs> Cleveland, Ohio. Oh. You could hardly breathe in that place. Yeah. And uh, we ended up beating them there, and you know played really well. And again, that was their only loss all year. So. The reward for that was to go to the Palestra and play LaSalle, who had Lionel Simmons and Tim Legler, who were both future NBA players. And the Palestra is a historic um, facility, but it is one of the worst facilities I've ever played in. The lighting was terrible. 
It was dark. I could, one of my fondest memories of that game was in warm-ups. You know, we were doing layups, and the student section was yelling at us as we were doing, doing layups, and they were calling Derek Sanders a farm boy. <laughs> and, and Derek's like, fuck oh, boy, I don't even have grass in Chicago. What are they talking about? He's from the <laughs> south side. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about the lighting because I was a red shirt that year, and so I was shooting threes during warm up, getting yelled at because I wasn't going to play no matter what. The lighting was, was on one side right. along the ceiling. That was it. Yeah, if you were shooting into it, you were blinded by the lighting. Yeah. And uh, it was it was a horrible gym. So anyway, we, we lost that game, ended our season. Uh, Derek moved on. And then, you know, that allowed us uh, to move into my senior year, myself, Jeff, Tony, and Cliff. And, uh, you know, we can talk about that next. So in uh, your senior year, if it's 1988, Bradley is probably the, the favorite. They still have Hawkins. Um you know, coming off two, three years. A lot less has gone at that point in time. But yeah. you guys have the four seniors. you got that sophomore class. Uh, um, John's red shirt, so he's in that class that, that, that's there too. So you guys are probably, probably up there along with Wichita. So, so talk about that season because I think there were some high expectations, you know, going in. And, and then talk about the start of it. And Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there were high expectations. I mean, we, we had four seniors that all played, you know, pretty significant roles over the last few years and uh, built up a lot of confidence and, and just, you know, camaraderie with each other. And then the underclassmen, uh, you mentioned we didn't really have a junior class anymore because Sonny and John both redshirted. Um, but the, the now sophomore class was really strong with, with those two as well as JC and, and uh, Randy and Ricky. Uh, so it was a solid team. And actually, Todd Starks was the only junior coming into that season. Uh, Correct. Which is an interesting story as that turned out. So, again, high expectations. We started the year in an exhibition game against the Russian national team in Springfield, Illinois. And that team had, I think, three or four future NBA players on it, not to mention that was their Olympic team. And we played them, you know, neck and neck the entire game. I think we lost by six or seven. And uh, it, it was really kind of a, a, a you know, eye-opener for us that we, we could play with just about anybody. And, yeah, and uh, that Olympic team, Matt, they'll go on to win the gold in 88, right, against the David yeah. Robinson team. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of those same guys. So it, it was, uh, you know, really for us a pretty strong accomplishment that we were able to compete with that team. But it just it gave us the confidence that going into the season that we had a good mix. Well, unfortunately, uh, the result of that game is I ended up with a stress fracture in my leg, kind of in my shin area, and so I had to be shut down for about a month. And during that time, we played, um, you know, at Wisconsin Green Bay, who my brother played for. We lost that game. We played home against Purdue, who. Again, the previous couple seasons we had played at Purdue against their Big Ten champion teams and gotten smoked. Uh, we ended up losing that game by two or three points. So a game certainly we could have won. And then we played at DePaul and lost to them by 20. Again, they had, um, you know, some future NBA players on Dallas that team too. And yeah, they were number two. Strickland. The yeah, Rod Strickland yeah. was on that. I mean, just phenomenal. Terrence so, Green. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just a, a tough game. And, and that was the game where we lost Todd Starks. He had some words with one of our assistant coaches uh, in the first Some words. <laughs> and uh, was, was dismissed at halftime. And uh, even, you know, told not to ride the bus home. And my parents offered to give him a ride back to campus. And I said, don't you dare because that will come back to haunt me. So, anyway, you know, started off kind of a rocky start to the season. Um, but when I got back in there, we played in a couple of holiday tournaments, uh, played fairly well. We actually played Kansas State uh, in a tournament down in uh, Nashville. And uh, they had Mitch Richmond, and, and we mm -hmm. took that team to overtime. And that was the first kind of game I had come back and played. And uh, so that, you know, gave us, again, more confidence heading into the season. And then we played in the uh, uh, all, all college tournament in Oklahoma City. All-American. All-American tournament in yep. Oklahoma City. Yep. So the, the teams were uh, us, 
or Roberts, Oklahoma, and Iowa. Well, Oklahoma and Iowa had just played the year before in the NCAA tournament, and everyone was expecting this to be a rematch for them in that tournament. Well, and and Iowa's five, Oklahoma's one. Right. Yeah. So just a loaded, you know, tournament, and you know. I think Oklahoma played Oral Roberts the first game and won like 140 to 70. <laughs> Billy Tubbs was their coach then, and he left the starters in until there was, you know, 30 seconds left in the game. I thought you were going to talk about the score because we then you're going to have to tell the score of our Oklahoma game, right? Oh, yeah. We'll no. get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so then we played Iowa for the next game, and they had B.J. Armstrong, Roy Marble, Ed Horton, Kevin Gamble, Al Lorenzen, I mean, these guys were all future NBA players, too. And, uh, you know, we had four seniors and and a a good cast of of sophomores supporting us. So, you know, we came out firing in that game, and and Jeff played really well in the first half, and and I caught fire in the second half. And that was one of those games where he and I were both hitting at the same time. I think Jeff ended up with 30 points, and I had 27 and between the two of us, we had 13 threes. I mean, it was just unbelievable. But the biggest, the key uh, player in that game was Ricky Jackson. When we were down 16 with about 12 minutes to go in the game, Ricky came down on a breakaway and pulled up from the three-point line. Now, Ricky, I don't think, had taken five threes in his entire season up to this point. Pulled up from the three-point line. I thought Donawal was going to jump off the bench and grab him for shooting the ball, but he made it. Next possession, comes down the floor, makes another one. So we had cut 16 down to 10, and it just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. Well, towards the end of the game, I had hit a couple threes in a row, so I was feeling it. So I did a heat check on the next pass that came to me, and I I chucked one up too early. It was probably with 20 seconds to go in the game, maybe a little less than that, 10 seconds. And so missed it. They get the rebound. I think they called a timeout, and, and so the ball's out of bounds underneath the basket. Well, they throw it in, and I force the guy that that is receiving the ball to travel. So we get the ball back. And, uh, you know, coach calls play, sets it up, you know, comes over to me, and John, of all people, is setting a screen on some guy. We, and we have the footage, so it's going to be, as we're talking about this, it's going to be playing. So I shot fake and kind of step into a three, hit it, and we go up, I think, 89 to 88. And, Correct. Uh, yep. You know, there's still, I think, three seconds to go in the game. What's interesting, if you watch the end of the game, they set up a play where they try to draw draw a charge at half court when they're inbounding, and J- Gerard Coleman just runs flat over this guy. I mean, completely <laughs> and there was no call. And Dr. Tom Davis was the coach at Iowa at the time. He was just up in arms that they didn't make a call on that play. But, of course, that was a great victory for, for us. I think the first time that we had ever beaten a Big Ten team. And, uh, you know, that got, got us the opportunity to play Oklahoma the next night. Oklahoma had Stacy King, Harvey Grant, Mookie Blaylock, Ricky Grace. Winston Garland. Yeah, so they, I mean, they were loaded with future NBA players. That loaded. <laughs> that that team went on to the NCAA Tournament Championship. And, and by the way, yeah. they will press yeah. you for full oh. 40 minutes. And it, it doesn't matter what the score is, yeah. you're pressed for 40 minutes. So yeah. I think we lost that game 96 to 52, something like that. <laughs> Wasn't much better than Royal Roberts. No, no. <laughs> and again, Billy Tubbs kept his you know, players in until 30 seconds to go in the game. And one of the subs on that team, I don't even remember, it was Art Pollard. So Art was a kid that started in my class at ISU, left after his first year, transferred, I think, to a junior college, ended up Oklahoma, never played, was on the bench. He was the guy who, when Oklahoma, I think, won the Big 12 tournament. He was the guy, like, holding the signs that they were the Big 12 champs and they're going to the NCAA. <laughs> that was his role on the team. <laughs> so anyway, we, we took that momentum from that tournament, playing well. And our first Valley game was against Bradley at Peoria. So they're the favorite coming in. You know, Hersey Hawkins is a senior, and they, they had a loaded senior class as well. And, uh, you know, we beat them. We went into Peoria and beat them, at, you know, on their home court as the favorite uh, for the Valley that year. So, again, that gave us even more confidence. And we had some up-and-down games throughout the season. But finished really strong. I think we finished second or third in the Valley that year. 
uh, went on to play Bradley again in the, the championship game of the Valley uh, Tournament in Peoria again. So the Peoria was the location for that year's tournament. I think we lost by 20 that game. I think between Harris and I, we might have been three for 24 from three that game. <laughs> Just couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. But, uh, you know, again, we got the opportunity to go to the NIT tournament. And where did they send us again? Like Cleveland State. Cleveland State. And uh, <laughs> so they hadn't lost the game again that entire year at home. Sent us back there to play them again, as opposed to giving us a home game against them. And we lost that game in overtime. I think I ended up fouling out. Um, one of my biggest regrets following that game is that uh, Jeff ended up two points short of 1,000 points in his career. He finished yeah. his crew at 998 points. If I'd have known that yeah. going into the game or even at halftime, I'd have been passing him the ball every time until he got there. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, what was fun- and, uh, Let's clarify something. So, so Jeff's a great three-point shooter, right? Oh, yeah. But but freshman year, sophomore year, there is no three-point line. No. There- so he was nine, 998 with only two years of, of uh, three-point line. And, and Jeff played, you know, quite a bit his sophomore year. He, he didn't play hardly at all his freshman year. And, yeah. uh, but didn't want a red shirt, you know, and, and which is fine. But played quite a bit his sophomore year and then uh, really, you know, started to shine his junior year when the three point line came around. And, you know, but back, obviously his sophomore year, he would have had at least another 15 to 20 points at oh, least, if easily. not 50. Yeah, right? easily. Because, yeah. I mean, he never shot, well, he'd drive or shoot a three. There was no really, he didn't really. Once in a while, you'll see him, and we have some footage, and I'll right. see if I can find some of him pulling up in the mid range. But well, yeah, I mean, even when he drove, was... he was looking to get fouled to go to the line. So, he wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> and I have a great footage at the Creighton game of him doing exactly that. So yep. we'll throw that in in the in the footage. Yeah. So, so, it, so the... you know, a, a tough end of the season, but you know that was our career, and and you know one that we were certainly proud about. So, so the three point line comes in. Your junior year, right, right, and your senior year. Just let's tell the folks at, at home here uh, um, what what good shooting is. So you shot over fifty percent from the field shooting threes, right. which is incredible. And you know what I find astounding is you know so you're, you're number one all time in ISU, number one. So number one in the season and number one for a career. 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 Technically, I had not- me four for nine my junior year, but <laughs> senior year was much more prolific. Yeah, and you shot a lot three, so it, it wasn't like oh, you, you know, you were five, five for nine your your, your, yeah. your senior year. You, um, and Jeff shot a lot, and in fact, he holds the record for the most made threes right in, in a season, which yeah. was his junior year. Correct. And he's number two. And so I, I find astounding, like, you know, Donald, like, if you talk to everyone uh, uh, about the Donald offense, it's about pounding it, Rick Lamb, right. you, you know, pounding it inside. But the first two years of a, a three-point shot, I mean, he he had to make some adjustments, right? But I would because, argue, Steve, that you said it's pounded inside. It is not pounded inside. It is good yeah. Bob, Don, Bob Donald, Bobby Knight motion offense. Right. And taking good, solid shots, right? And no, I'm just talking, so, if you talk to the average fan, they always talk about, you know, the inside, you know. And, inside and, and is a inside. piece of it, but yeah. it's not as big a piece of it right. as what you would think, right? right. So, um, and, and like I explained earlier, and I say it all the time, is one of the things that Matt and Jeff did that are just absolutely phenomenal is that when they would come off the screen, they were always stepping into their shot. And I talk about this, Steve and John, when we're at the Valley Tournament, how many guys are leaning or doing this, yeah. right? I mean, we were such a disciplined, fundamental team under Bob Donawald. I mean, it was not yeah. like that under Bender, but it was totally like that under Donawald, yeah. right? Fundamentals, 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 and then some more fundamentals on top of that. Yeah, yeah in the game today, it's all about shooting the threes, right? So it, it's yeah. it is. I think you know it's more of a law of averages. You know, even if you only yeah. shoot, you know, thirty percent from from the three point line, it's it's almost like shooting fifty percent within the three point line. So I think everyone yeah. just kind of steps back and launches it. You know, just about every player on the court. So it's it's gotten a little ridiculous, but uh, you know, it was it was a unique 
uh, opportunity. I think, you know, Jeff had more made threes, I think, his junior year than he did his senior year because I probably took some of those away from him my senior year. And I can remember the first day of practice my senior year, and I had been working all summer long on my three-point shot. I went up to Donowal and I said, hey, are you okay with me shooting threes? And he said, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so for that vote of confidence, right? Yeah, yeah vote so of confidence. Confidence. <laughs> You know, the, the season kind of spoke for itself. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, in addition to the Iowa game where I had, I think, seven threes in that game, uh, and I, I think I had one disputed shot from the corner that I should have gotten a three, but it was called a two. Um, and then, you know, our last game at, at uh, Horton Fieldhouse, or it was supposed to be the last game altogether at Horton, was against Butler. I had six threes Probably. in the first half and uh, one more to start the second half, and I thought, you know, the record's easy from here. I didn't take another three the entire game. and uh, But it was – Because you were probably on the bench most of the time. No, because, you know, what was you, fun we were about probably the game up. Is, is, is Jeff, Tony, Cliff, myself, we all had just a, a really phenomenal game. And to go out as seniors in the last game on senior night at, uh, at Horton Fieldhouse was, was probably one of my biggest memories. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we're going to wrap up this episode with Matt Tapworn, Bird Fans Forever podcast. Um, Matt, thank you so much. It was an honor playing with you. You were a great mentor, you and William Anderson, right? Um, the number of times you yelled at me or grabbed my jersey, <laughs> but it was out of love and to help me do the right thing, right? Um, you know, and like you talked earlier about having Lou dog you, right? A lot of those guys were back even your sophomore year and my freshman year. And those, you know, those wonderful guys helped us so much preseason and uh, um, taught us the way, the Redbird way. And so, again, thank you. And this is episode 10 for Bird Fans Forever. Mr. Engineer, are you going to actually do your job for once? <laughs> <laughs> clapping, clapping. It's not doing it. He freaks. <laughs>